there was one thing that walking out of WandaVision that kind of bugged me about what they did with Wanda. But this movie gave me the Wanda that I've wanted for a very long time. Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome back to another review. Today we're going to be doing a review for Doctor Strange in the Multiverse of Madness. Now before we get started make sure to leave a like and subscribe. I would really appreciate that and check out some of my other videos. Also this is going to be a spoiler review. I've waited a bit to release this review to film it and release it because I want you guys to spend the weekend go watch the movie. Uh, hopefully you've already seen it this weekend. Let me know down in the comments what you think about the film. So Doctor Strange in the Multiverse of Madness is a film that has been very highly anticipated by fans because people have been thinking that we were going to see all these crazy cameos in the film due to the multiverse concept. But this movie is not really that and I'm kind of happy it's not that because some of the rumors that were coming out about like Ben Affleck's Daredevil showing up in this, Tom Cruise showing up in this, like it was just kind of getting out of hand and then at a certain point you start thinking that this movie might be a mess if all of these cameos really do happen here. And thankfully, they didn't. The main concept of the movie is that we are introduced to America Chavez. And her powers is that she can travel across multiverses. That's her entire powers. There is not one of her in any other universe in the multiverse. She's one of a kind. And she's got these powers that allows her to travel to any universe that she wants. But she doesn't know how to control them. But all of a sudden, all of these like witchcraft monsters are coming after her. And other strangers and other universes are protecting her. And she's jumping universes. And eventually she does end up in our universe, which was confirmed to be Earth 616. So she jumps to our universe and she meets our Doctor Strange. And from there on, Doctor Strange now has to protect America Chavez from this thing that's chasing her. Because whatever is chasing her, it wants America Chavez's powers. The number one thing that I really liked about the movie, and everybody's been raving about this character over the weekend, is Wanda Maximoff, Elizabeth Olsen's. Um, Scarlet Witch. She was phenomenal in the movie and I absolutely love what they did with her. I love that they went full evil mode on her. Like she is the villain of this movie and I love that because after watching WandaVision I never liked the ending of WandaVision for her because let's be honest the WandaVision she enslaved the whole city enslaved a bunch of innocent people to live out her fantasy life and then by the end of WandaVision she was just kind of like okay guys you are free my bad, I'm gonna go discover myself. Okay, bye. In WandaVision, she is the villain. She does enslave an innocent town, right? But in this movie, they go full villain mode on her. Right from the moment we meet her, we find out that she was the one that has been sending all these like magical creatures after America Chavez. And she's the one that wants America Chavez's powers, mainly because the Dark Hold has corrupted her, but also because she wants Chavez's powers, uh, which are to travel across any universe, because she wants to go to the universe where her kids are real. Her plan is she's going to go to that universe, kill that Wanda, and then she's going to like live out this happy fake life with her kids in another universe. Making Wanda a full villain in this movie actually did a lot for Elizabeth Olsen's performance. In this movie, Wanda, the Scarlet Witch, is after America Chavez the entire time. This movie is basically a race. Doctor Strange and America, they are running from Scarlet Witch. And Scarlet is like this monster that is chasing them. There's a lot of great horror elements with her. There's a great like scene in the tunnels where like they're just running through these tunnels away from her. And she's just kind of like moving like a zombie. She's got like blood across her face and she's just kind of doing her magical things. It was super dope. I think going the villain route really brought out a great performance out of Elizabeth Olsen. And it really did a lot for the Scarlet Witch character because it was really well set up in WandaVision, at the end of WandaVision at least. At the end of WandaVision, Agatha was like, you are the Scarlet Witch. You are the Nexus being. This is not good. You are a thing to be feared. Like, Agatha set that up. And now this movie shows why we need to fear Wanda, why we need to fear the Scarlet Witch. Let's talk about the Illuminati. Ooh, right, jumping in a bit early into it. So the Illuminati is the big cameos that we were all expecting in this movie. The Illuminati is this group in another universe. Basically, that universe is Avengers. And this group consists of Black Bolt from the Inhumans, Captain Marvel, who is Monica Rambeau in this. Now that I think about it, I'm pretty sure it's Maria Rambeau. Monica was the daughter that showed up in WandaVision, right? Captain Carter, we saw in What If. By the way, if you haven't seen What If, 
you don't really need to see what if, but if you saw what if, like you would get a little more enjoyment out of some of these cameos and some of these characters. Mordo, he's there. We'll talk about him in a second. Uh, <sighs> John Krasinski as Mr. Fantastic. And am I missing anybody? Oh, <laughs> Professor Xavier. Professor Xavier. We saw him in the trailer. Oh, we heard him in the trailer. He was in the trailer, and he's got his, like, from the animated series, yellow chair. By the way, when he showed up, did anybody hear the X-Men theme song? Come on. I guess let's talk about John Krasinski as Mr. Fantastic. So Mr. Fantastic makes his appearance in the MCU for the first time. We get our first glimpse out of Fantastic Four in the MCU, although it's in another universe, and it's John Krasinski. I can finally stop seeing this goddamn Photoshop picture on everywhere on social media about how John Krasinski is to play Mr. Fantastic. I'm also one of those people that like when I first heard it like 10 years ago, I was like, yeah, you know, John Krasinski, you know, this picture, this Photoshop picture looks pretty good. I'm down with that. But then every single year, people were like, hey, John Krasinski, John Krasinski, John Krasinski. And I'll be honest, I got tired of it. I was like, guys, do we have anybody else that we want to fan cast? No, nobody else. I understand. I love John Krasinski. Great actor, great director. I love it. But do we have anybody else? And I guess, I guess not. This one, I did not expect at all, which I should have seen coming because earlier in the movie, uh, that version or Christine Palmer from that universe tells Doctor Strange that this Illuminati building was set up by the Baxter Foundation. And in the theater, I heard that and I was like, oh shit, wait, the Baxter building? And somehow it still never crossed my mind. And then he showed up. He turns into spaghetti. He turns into just shredded paper. Wanda wipes the floor once again, but this time with the Illuminati. The Illuminati shows up and they look all cool. They're like, yeah. We got this, Wanda, no big deal. Killed, 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 killed. You're done. Fucking Reed Richards goes, uh, you know, Wanda Black Bolt over here can destroy it with one sound out of his mouth. And she goes, what mouth? Doesn't have a mouth, fucking screams into his own head. Head pops, dead. Oh my God, that was amazing. And then John Krasinski goes, what? Turns into shreds. Oh man, that was great. Captain Carter fucking gets sliced by her shield after saying she can do it all day, like literally five seconds later, dead. Monica Rambo gets like a, like a statue dropped on her. Eh, okay. But yeah, everybody else, oh, Professor X. First of all, Professor X had one of the worst lines in this movie. There's a point where he goes into Wanda's head and he finds like another version of Wanda in, in there because on well, the concept of this movie, like, how Wanda can travel between universes is she can dreamwalk. And what that is, is due to the spell that she learned in the dark hold, she can just meditate in our universe, but she can send her mind into another universe as Wanda. So she can control that Wanda. She can basically use that Wanda's body to carry out whatever she wants to do. Right. She would transfer her mind there. There's like this vision, like what it looks like in her head. And it's like the nice Wanda who's being taken over is like under rubble. And he goes, maybe if I can lift this rubble, I can get you out of here. And like, I can free you. That was a bad line. I'm not going to lie. And then fucking Wanda shows up and she snaps his neck. <laughs> ah, Professor X is dead again. Now, a lot of people might be upset because the Illuminati died right away. I think a lot of people were excited to see the Illuminati. Personally, I'm not that upset because I think having the Illuminati there and setting them up as like these like cool guys that should be able to take care of Wanda and then Wanda just kills all of them really, again, shows how powerful Wanda is, but also just adds stakes to the movie because these are heroes that we've seen, like Reed Richards is here, you know, Professor X is here. We feel safe for a second, but then seeing Wanda kill actual heroes, kill these characters that we kind of care about, not really because we never really get to know any of them besides like their names and like their references, yes. But having Wanda actually kill the Illuminati and not kill just a bunch of strangers really makes her that much more dangerous. And I think that was great. And again, the horror elements with that, some some brutal, brutal deaths. This movie really pushes the PG-13 rating. And uh, I absolutely love it for that. And the funny thing is, I think it will really work to have John Krasinski's B. Reed Richards in our 616 world. Because the way this multiverse in this movie is done, first of all, it turns out that in the MCU, your dreams 
where like when you're having a dream, you're actually witnessing your other version in another universe. So that's how it works. And the funny thing is, it turns out that the other versions of you are basically like you, just a little bit different. Like Doctor Strange walks across some multiverse and he's looking for different versions of himself. And there's never a version of himself that's just a doctor. There's always versions of himself where he becomes the Sorcerer Supreme, where he always has magic. Like, there's always versions of Wanda. Yes, it's slightly different, but all the Wandas have her magic powers. So, John Krasinski, Reed Richards, could be all over the universe, and he would always be Reed Richards, just a little bit different in some ways. It's not like a drastic difference. At least that's what I got from the movie, because there's never a Doctor Strange here that's just like a guy. He always has powers, but he is a little bit different. Okay, so now that we talked about Elizabeth Olsen, Scarlet Witch, and the Illuminati, let's talk about the star of the movie himself, the guy whose name is in the title, Doctor Strange, Stephen Strange. What do I think about him? I thought he was, like, okay in the movie, honestly. Over the past couple of years, especially after his movie in Infinity War and Endgame and all the other projects that he's been in, I've really fallen in love with this character. I love Benedict Cumberbatch as his character. And he does his thing in this movie. He's not bad. He does his thing in this movie. But I wish his character had like more characterization in this movie. And I wish the movie was more focused on him. Because like I said, this movie is really just Wanda. And she's coming after America Chavez. And Doctor Strange is playing defense the entire time. It's not real. The movie's not really about him. There is a thing that they try to do that doesn't really land in the movie with me. And the, and I'm a kind of upset about it because I've seen it done better in What If. And that is his relationship with Christine Palmer. This movie came out six years after the first Doctor Strange movie. So first of all, you have to expect fans to remember where their relationship was in the first movie to care about where it is in this movie. In this movie, when it starts, Christine Palmer's getting married to another guy, but Doctor Strange like, you know, I still love you. Like, I wish I could do better. And this entire movie, people are telling him, hey, like, how about you go to a different universe where, like, you can be with Christine and you can be happy. Like, that's, like, great for you, right? Like, you're super in love with her. You're super in love with her, right, Christine Palmer? They just keep saying that. But it never comes off naturally where I actually feel that he that this relationship really needs to happen. I'm never actively rooting for like, you know what, they're right. Doctor Strange needs to find a universe where he can be happy with Christine. I don't care about the Christine relationship, to be honest. And I don't think Rachel McAdams is going to come back in the third movie. I just don't see the point of it. I know she might want that Marvel check. But to be honest, I don't see why she would need to come back. Her character in our universe is already married and doesn't look like she wants anything to do with Doctor Strange. And I just think What If did such a better job in a 30-minute episode to make me care about this Christine-Doctor Strange relationship than this entire movie did. He's traveling across the multiverse in this movie, and his whole thing is that, you know, Christine is on his mind, the love of his life. Like, can he ever be happy? And I just never cared about the Christine thing, to be honest. Like, the relationship never felt it. Also, from the trailers and everything, and walking into this movie not knowing that Wanda was going to be the villain, what I really wanted from this movie was to set up that Doctor Strange is actually the bad guy because he's this arrogant guy. We Again, we saw him in What If destroy an entire universe because he is so arrogant and he'll do whatever. He'll break any rules, right? So this is what I wanted from this movie, that he was going to mess around with the multiverse yet again, cause a lot of problems. But there's like one or two scenes here where the Illuminati kind of explain it to him. They're like, hey, like, this is how you are the bad guy here. And it seems like more of a setup for another Doctor Strange project. This this movie does end with his mind being corrupted by the Darkhold, I guess, which is something they predicted earlier in the movie. So it seems like they're saving that storyline of Doctor Strange going to destroy the universe for a future project. But I wish that this project was the project for that. He is a second thought in his own movie. And again, it's nothing to do with Benedict Cumberbatch. I think Benedict Cumberbatch is fantastic in this movie as a character. I just wish the writing gave him more to do and the writing treated him as the main character of this movie. Sam Raimi's directing is on point. When this movie was announced, it was promised to be the first MCU horror movie. And I think they deliver on that. There's a lot of great horror elements in this. Not like the most scariest things ever, I would say. But definitely scary for an MCU. I'm personally not a big fan of like horror stuff. But I've seen scarier stuff than this. 
but I loved a lot of the horror elements, especially with the stuff with the Illuminati all being murdered in brutal ways. That was great. First opening battle with the monster with the with the one eye when Doctor Strange takes a a lamppost and flies it into the monster's eye. I knew I was in for like an actual horror movie because it didn't cut away. It like straight up showed the lamppost go into the monster's eye and then take the whole eyeball out. I thought that, and then you see just the hollow space that the eyeball's missing and the eyeball's just on the, that was great stuff, honestly, love that. The number one thing that I did like about Doc Strange's movie is that they go more absurd with the magic and more creative with the magic, and again, the magic that he does, because in the first movie, I felt like it was a lot of like his orange portals and orange ropes and orange weapons and stuff like that, but in this movie, He's like turning his hands into monster hands. There's a great scene where Doctor Strange fighting this other Doctor Strange and they use musical notes. Oh, that was so creative. They use like tiny little musical notes to make music. That was great stuff and they use it as weapons. Wong was also in this movie and uh, yeah, I liked Wong in this movie, but he's definitely like an afterthought. He still is the Sorcerer Supreme and at the end of the movie, he remains the Sorcerer Supreme. His relationship with Doctor Strange is great. It's not really like super duper developed in this movie. They don't spend a lot of time in this movie together. They do a classic thing with his character where when they don't need him, they just kind of knock him out. Like he stays unconscious for a while and then he wakes up towards the third act when they need him. But with Wong, what I would like to see is, you know, honestly, people have been talking more and more about maybe a Wong Disney Plus series. I kind of want to see that. I want to see Wong go on his own, like, adventures. Benedict Wong is uh, great as this character, and I would love to see more of him. I just want to see more of Wong uh, to judge the character. Uh, but in this movie, the way they use him, he was fine. Let's talk about Mordo. He's really not used in this movie in the way that I thought they would use him in this movie. They kind of abandoned where, well, they didn't fully abandon, but they kind of abandoned what they set up at the end of Doctor Strange 1. If you remember the post credit scene, he, like, starts taking sorcerer's powers away because he's like, I'm going to kill sorcerers because there's too many of them, right? Now he's the bad guy. But in this movie, the Mordo that we see, he's a different verse. He's part of the Illuminati. He's the wackest part of the Illuminati. Actually, he's the wackest part, but he survives. He survives the Wanda attack. But he's not even like our Mordo, so the story doesn't really continue there. Doctor Strange does mention that our universe's Mordo has like a sworn thing to destroy Doctor Strange. But it's never shown, it's just said. I don't know how long has it passed since the first Doctor Strange movie and this movie, like in terms of MCU timeline. And if they have fought already or what. But it kind of feels like they're abandoning what they set up in the first movie, so... Mordo is really not utilizing this movie at all. He's there for the Illuminati real quick. Him and Doctor Strange have a little fight. But again, he's not our Mordo. He's a different universe Mordo. So it's like hard to care about him. And he, he really has no motivations besides he's part of the Illuminati. However, one of my biggest problems with the film is definitely the pacing. This movie never seems to find good pacing. At times, it feels slow. It feels like we got great momentum. We're setting up something great. And then the movie kind of slows down a little bit. But then the funny thing is, is that right at the end, when it comes to the ending, it just kind of rushes to the ending. And then the ending feels really rushed. So the movie never finds like a good balance in terms of pacing. And for me, that kind of took me out of the movie sometimes. I felt like the pacing was really off in the film. And I've seen a lot of people say it. This movie clocks in at only two hours and six minutes. Sam Raimi has said that there might be a two hour, 40 minute cut out there. I don't know if we'll ever see it. I don't know if whether it will improve the pacing, but the pacing seems off. Oh, I almost forgot. America Chavez. Um, yeah, I would love to see her more in the MCU and see where they take her character in the future. I like where they left her off. She's in Comitage. She's going to be studying magic. So now she's going to have magic powers and her own multiverse powers. So that could be pretty cool. But in this movie, she is utilized as like, an item because again Wanda needs her powers and Doctor Strange needs to defend her so at times it doesn't really feel like she's a character it feels like her powers are more important because Wanda needs her powers and Doctor Strange needs to protect her powers there's a time where we get to explore her character just a little bit but it was like really quick and then we're back to the chase and she has to keep herself alive but hey she survived the movie so let's see where we go in the future with her what do we think Wanda dead alive 
definitely alive, right? Like, she went out... If she's dead, she went out in the lamest way possible. You're telling me a movie where we saw Mr. Fantastic get turned into string cheese? We're not even going to see Wanda fully die. We're gonna, just going to get, like, a power of rocks fall on her? Come on, that's some Game of Thrones bullshit right there. Let's not do that. In terms of post credit scenes, Charlize Theron showed up in, like, a purple suit. That's pretty much all I can tell you. Don't know her character. She needs Doctor Strange's help. Although, did anybody notice when she opened the portal that they went into, it looked like the place where Dur Dormammu is? Or it looked like Dormammu? It, it looked like it. Come on, be real with me. It had, like, the same vibe to it. I feel like they want to do new things, and sometimes it works. Sometimes it doesn't work. Majority of the time in this movie, it did work. They promised a first ever MCU horror film, and they delivered on that. Now let's make our R-rated horror film in the MCU. I think that would be great. The best way you can push horror, I think, is like R-rating. Because the R-rating lets you go violent. And I know horror is not all about the violence and the blood. Sometimes you can make a great horror film just built on like intensity. Uh, you can learn that from John Krasinski. John Krasinski did that in A Quiet Place. But, you know, if you can get that R rating with the violence and the blood, like, you can fully unleash some of these characters, and that could be fun. But overall, Doctor Strange in the Multiverse of Madness is a good entry to the MCU. I wouldn't say it's, like, the best or my favorite of all time, but it's another good entry into the MCU. Horror, new type thing. Sam Raimi did his thing in terms of directing. Everybody brought in terms of the cast. I just wish they did more with some characters. Elizabeth Olsen as the Scarlet Witch. Definitely stand out. I really love what they did with her. That was my review of Doctor Strange in the Multiverse of Madness. Let me know down in the comments. What did you think about the film? What did you think about the Illuminati? Do you want to see John Krasinski back as Reed Richards? Do you want to see any of those actors back as their respective characters? Like, we might see Black Bolt again, but in our world now. We might see Professor Xavier, but in our world now. Captain Carter, I don't know because Peggy died in our universe, so I don't see that happening. Tell me. Tell me all of your thoughts about the movie down in the comments. I would love to have a discussion with you about that. Make sure you leave a like and subscribe. I would really appreciate that. And I'll see you guys next time. Peace.